Got it? It relates to last, the previous year, but in a different way. It's an alternative way of learning about the um, particular. We're talking about where we learn the Takia before and the Takia afterwards. It was very relevant as we approach um, the two, three days ago. Um, let's have a look. Lamad Dalad Omad Aleph. And it's about 12 lines down. It says Hekesha. So if you can see that, the line is Hekesha. Yeah. Ten. I'm sorry, it's 13 lines down. Yeah, 13 lines down, four words in. And I hope you've got the same, uh, what you were, the, the attachment you were sent gives you the psukim round the side. I think it does. Um, numbered, I'm sure it does. So let's see how we go today. Baha'i Tana, there's another Tana. We learned a Brysa last week, and we've got an alternative way of learning about the Psukim. Don't forget, let's start off with one thing we do remember. Remember, we had a Gezeira Shava, we had the anchor between our Chodesh Hashvi, um, when it was talking about the seventh month talking about Yeovil, and also the seventh month talking about um, Rosh Hashanah. The word Shavi was unnecessary. And therefore, what we learned from the word Shavi that was talking there about Yeovil, Yeovil being on Yom Kippur, and it says it's in the seventh month. Well, I think we know Yom Kippur is in the seventh month. It mentions that several times. We learned last week, and that we do pick up with us, that the word Shavi as an anchor puts whatever we learn about Yeovil and the blowing the shofar then, we are going to put that together with whatever we learn about Rosh Hashanah all in the pot together. So bear that in mind as we progress. Fahai Tana, the following Tana, Maisi Lo Bigzeru Shava. Ah, the principle about having a, remember, a trua, it's a sandwich and you've got the tekiah either side. That they learned from the Midbar. Good to see you, Sam. Um, the beginning of 14 lines down, me Midbar, from the Midbar. We're talking about the chauffeur they blew, if you remember, when they were gathering people together or they were on the move. Um, all the psukim there um, that talk about in the beginning of Bar Midbar when they were traveling. The Sanya, we've got a Brysa. Now, next to my Gomorrah, it's got number four. Hope it's got the same with you. Uskar Tem Terua. Is that what you've got? A little. Yes, good. A thumbs up. Thank you. Uskar Tem Terua. Now, the possum there is in Bamidbo 10, chapter 5. I won't bother you, Peter, yet. Uh, so hold on. Uskar Tem Terua. It says you should blow a Terua. And then, if you remember, those who were encamped on the east. Uh, Yehuda and the rest of that uh, Degel, they traveled. Uskartem to Rua, Venosu Hamachnos Hachunim Kedem. I'm looking now at the, the note number four in mine, or Dalad, tells me where the Posuk um, comes from. Uh, go back to the Gemara, please. It says Uskartem to Rua. The two words that are used, you should blow a Trua. Says the Gemara, that teaches us there are two separate notes. A tekiah bifne atzma and a trua bifne atzma. Okay. Have a look, please. This We've got Rashi, actually. Uh, you're like this comparison. I've got Robert with us as well. No, yeah. Um, uh, Rashi's both on the inside and the outside. No toast for so Rush is um, printed on both sides. We're now talking about the inside. It's about 12 lines up. Hi Tana Maisilo Mimidbo. Have you got it? Yeah, Mimidbo, beginning of the line. Sheta hey, I'm keeping a finger on the Rashi and a finger on the, the Gemara. Shete Pshuta Lufonel U Pshuta Lachreo. From the Midbo, we can learn this principle that we learned last week, the alternative way of learning this depends which school you are from, um, learns that there should be a pshuta, which means a straight note prior to the truah. And do you remember the truah? It's a word that means either the shavarim 
or the Trua, or the Shvarim Trua. We spoke about that last week. The Torah calls it a Trua. It's the crying note in the middle. Um, so this Tana is going to learn, continue the Rashi. Tkio bifne atzma, because the Posuk says, Uskatem Terua. Says Rashi, De lo tamer, don't learn. Simon, good to see you. Um, there you are. It's recorded, so uh, everybody knows you're here. So, um, De lo tamer, you shouldn't say chodohi. Lama Dalad Omad Allah, 14 lines down. We're doing the Rashi about eight lines up on the inside. Don't learn that it's one note because you could translate Uskatem Terua, blow a Trua. Says Rashi, don't learn like that. Bahoki Ka'oma, for you Toikin Terua, don't learn that these two words go together to say that you should blow. A true and a hochi ka'oma. This is the way you should learn. Uskatem, blow eight kia. Va'achareho, he riu terua. Uskatem, blow eight kia. And then a true is the second note. That's the way you should read this possum. Says the Gemara. Have you got it? Tkia bifne atzma. Tkia by itself. A true bifne atzma. Says Gamara, well, not so convinced with that. Ato oime tekio bifne atzma, uturua bifne atzma, oi eno, maybe not. Ela tekio uturua achas i. Maybe it's just a verb before the noun. Blow a trua. Says Gamara, no. Kushu oime, there's another posuk. Have a look, sorry, just a minute, the Rashi. O Eino Ela Achasi, Bahochi Ka'oma. This is the way you should learn and translate that posuk. Ho you toikin Terua, they would blow a Terua. Rather than the way we are learning, you should blow a Tekia and then a Terua. They're two separate pieces here. Says Gemara, no, I'm back to the Gemara. Omer, Uva Hakil Es Hakoho. Now in mine, it's note number five. Round the side, if you look at the psukim, uvahakil esakoho, when they gathered together people, that was when they weren't traveling, but they, Moshe Rabbeinu had something to tell them all. Tiska'u below sorio, that posuk says. Go back now to the Gemara. Uvahakil esoon, tiska'u below sorio. You can see there are two separate entities. The posuk could have just said, if it meant to blow, uskatem. I know what uskatem means. You don't need the word trua. Or bahare osem. If it says utkatem, terua, back to our Gomara. Below sariya havi oime. From there you see. Tekia bifne atzma, utrua bifne atzma. The Rashi on the inside, the last couple of lines. Kushu oime tiskuu below sariu. You should blow a tekia, and not a trua. That's quite important. When they were gathering together the people, they blew a tekia without a trua. Otherwise, people were unsure whether they're actually traveling or was it the Moshe Rabbeinu was calling them. Um, so, if they were only being called for some announcements and messages, then tiskuu they blew a tekia. Below Toriu, says Rashi. Michlal, from there you can infer. Deba Masois, when they traveled. And it says, Uskatem Terua. Tiskuu Vesoriu. There were two things happening there. Ka'oma. It means both the Tekio sound and the Trua sound. U Terua lo Kori le Tekio. A Trua is not a Tekio. Ariel Kochoch, certainly Tikia Bifneatsma, Utrua Bifneatsma. So I'm just one minute. We're now focusing on when they traveled. And the Posuk says to Skatem Terua. Okay. Now, we are still focusing on traveling. Nothing to do with Rosh Hashanah yet. Continues the Gemara. Uminayin Shepeshuta la Achreho. How do you know they also blew 
on that occasion when they wanted to travel also a tekiya following in other words it was tekiya trua and another tekiya have you got a acharehah Talmud loima trua tiskeu this is note number six skatim trua shenis trua yiskeu lemasei and they should blow a trua with a tekiya Bashi Talmud loimus katem vahodo terua. Okay, so that tells me from those psukim together that you've got a tekiya, then a trua, then just to prove the point, it said trua yiskeu. There should be another tekiya when they're traveling to conclude it. So it's Kiyo Teruah Tekiyo. Says the Gemara Rabbi Shmuel Benoshel Rabbi Yochanan Ben Baroka. I don't need the way you just learned this. I've got a much better way of proving you blew a Tekiyo afterwards. Harehu Oime, it says in that very posuk, Uskaten Teruah Shainis. You should blow a second what do you mean a second? Shein Talmud Loma Shein. You don't need to say a second. Have a look at the Rashi. Shekava Oma, it has already said Uskatem Trua. Venosa Machane Plaini. It already says you're going to blow when the first camp moves. Remember, they were in four areas for Dugolin, um, north, south, east, west. When it says for the second group, then the second group started to travel. Obviously, it's the second time. I don't need the word shainis there again. Yeah? I'm going back to the Gemara. Shainis, I don't need that word, Shainis. Uma Talmud Loma Shainis, Zebna Av. This is coming as a general rule. That's called a Binyan Av, a fatherly learning, a learning from a father dropping down to the future generation. It doesn't mean uh, literally generations. It means it's a father limud, which teaches for other places. That's what Shainis means. Whenever the word Shainis is teaching us, whenever there is a Trua, Ah, Uskatem Trua Shainis. That word Shainis is teaching us that together with a Trua, interesting lesson this. Have a look at Rashi. This is how you read that possum. Uskatem tekiya shenis litrua. Uskatem trua shenis. You should blow a tekiya which should be second to the terua. You with me? So from there, learns Rabbi Yochanan ben Rabbi Shmuel ben Osher, Rabbi Yochanan ben Baroka. We now have concluded, as far as the traveling is concerned, there's a tekiya. A trua, and then the shenis is telling me whenever there's a trua, always have it followed by a tekiya. Okay, that is all, however, to do with traveling. Ain li, beginning of the line is li, you know, li, do uh, li, li, beginning of the line, ain li elabamidbar. That's all very well. Regarding the midbar. Barosh Hashanah Minayin, where do we learn that it should be the same on Rosh Hashanah? Talmud Loima, Teruah, Teruah, Ligzeira Shava. Now I've got a little note, number four, superscript, I suppose, a four and a three. We've got a Gezeira Shava linking Trua to Trua. What's the linking? Have a look at number four and number three in the list. Number four is 
Uskatem Trua, the Nosra Machlas Hachenim came on. You've got the word Trua there, but it links up to the one which is number three. We mentioned this before last week. There's a tradition that that Trua should be linked to the Trua of the traveling. So in other words, whatever you're doing for the traveling, move across also for Rosh Hashanah. Trua Ligzeira Shava. Okay? Now, says the Gemara, so we've linked from traveling, where we know there's a Tkia, Trua Tkia, we've linked across, and that tells us that whenever there's a Trua in the traveling, there's a Tkia prior to Gear Post. We've got a link across to Rosh Hashanah. We've got a Trua over there. There's a Tkia before it and it's a kia after it, okay? Says the Gemara, and this is extremely interesting, particularly for this current week, as we'll see. Sholosh Teruos Neam of Rosh Hashanah. There are three times it mentions this word Trua on Rosh Hashanah. Okay. Very different to the way we learned last week. Number two, the superscript, Shabbosoin Zichron Terua. Let's have a look at that posseg. It's number two, I think, on your list from Emar. Speak to the Nei Yisrael, Bachudesh Hashvi Be'echo Bachudesh Yerachem Shabbosoin. Rest day. Zichron Terua Mikro Kodesh. Interesting, it says Zichron Terua Mikro Kodesh. A memory of the truer. Remind yourself of the truer. Interesting wording, that. Anyway, we've got the word truer, and it's talking about Rosh Hashanah. And you've also got Yom Teruah. That's number three. That's the Pasuk in Pinchos, where it says Yom Teruah. Another time it mentions the word truer. The third one is the one dealing with Yovel, if you remember, Rosh Hashanah. Actually, sorry, Yom Kippur of Yovel. And there it also says, Bavato Shofar Teruo. So, we learned last week that we are comparing always, this is like amazing how you've got the anchor moving across. We've moved from the Midbar to Rosh Hashanah to tell us We've got the word true there, great. So it means a tekiah before it, a tekiah after it, and a true in the middle. It mentions the word true three times, twice referring to Rosh Hashanah, once referring to the seventh month, which is Yovel. We already place all the tekiahs in one pot of the four, seventh month, right? To say... <laughs> That on Yovel you will blow three Teruas, on the, on the Yom Kippur of Yovel, the 50th year. You also blow three Teruas on Rosh Hashanah. Okay? Says the Gemara, but we've also learned that whenever there's a Trua, there's a Tekir before it, and a Tekir after it. Says the Gemara, from there we see, Ushte Tekiyos. Every one of those truas in the pot has two tekiyos. Lachol achas ba'achas. For every trua, there are two tekiyos. And if you remember, we wrote last week, they're the same length as the middle part of the sandwich. So therefore, we now have concluded the learning for this week, which tells us, Motino Lameidim, we therefore find that we can learn. Sholosh teruos. We've got three truas that are all in the pot together. Whether it's Rosh Hashanah or whether it's Yom Kippur of Yovel, there are going to be three truas. We've also learned from the traveling that there are going to be a tekiah prior and post, which therefore gives you six tekiahs. There are therefore six 
Eutychius, that is what we are going to blow. Now, this is what we'll see now is something new. We don't Pascha like this, but there, this view is the view we've got tonight. So, Sheish Turkios Nemru Barosh Hashanah. There are, in fact, three Turus and six Turkios. However, Shtayim Midivre Torah, Va'achas Midivre Sofrim. Oh my. Only two of them are Minah Torah. One of them is Midarabono. That is a big Kiddush. We learned the way we Paskin is like the previous Gemara that we saw last week, where there are three Minah Torah. Here we're saying no. There are two sets which are Minah Torah, and one set is Midarabonon only, but it's still a mitzvah. Let's see how the Gemara follows this through. Shabosain Zichroin Terua, the one that's talking actually, the Rosh Hashanah, Shabosain Zichroin Terua, and Vahavarta Shofa Terua, those two go in a pot together. The Shofa of Rosh Hashanah, the Shofa of the Yovel, with that Gezerah Shava, all go in the pot together. And therefore, there's two on Rosh Hashanah, two Teruos. Of course, they're going to be preceded and, and uh, after, and then they'll also have the Tekiah. Those are the two which are in the pot together. The Yom Teruah Yelochem, although it says Yom Teruah Yelochem, and it's talking about Rosh Hashanah, that comes little mudoi hubo. That comes only little mudo. Please look at Rashi. Now Rashi um, from that last narrow line gives you the, the correct text. There was obviously problems with the text. The text that he's got is a text we've got in the Gemara, so which is very good. So we can drop down and drop down to the beginning of the line of Rashi now in the outside of the Omud. Which says Shtai Midivre Torah. Have you got that? Because the previous slide just told me the correct text, which is what we've got, so that's great. To a Midivre Torah. Tre Kroi Dorosh Leminyono. Two come to teach us the actual counting of the two Minha Torah. Kudik Toni Ozil, as in fact the Gemara will explain. And what are the two? Continue Rashi. Here actually inverted the two, but it doesn't, it comes to the same thing. Um, it's got, instead of, we've got A and B, and in our Gemara, Rashi's got B and A, which is, Bavata Shofa Terua, which is the one talking about Yovel, Shabosoin Zichroin Terua, talking about Rosh Hashanah, those are Midivre Ter, Koloima, Mikan Nilmod Shtayim. That's where we learn the two Truis preceded by Tzkia and after another Tzkia. But Yom Trua Yelochem, Tidrashe, you'll learn it. Have a look at this. Le Minyona for the Minion, which is Midra Rabona, Shahare, Le Talmudai Huba. It's there to teach us something. It's Mufna. That was the anchor we needed, the Yom Terua Yi Elochem, Shedorash Trua Trua Ligzeira Shova. It want that was the link. This is the Gemara's learning tonight. That that link is the link to teach us compare Yom Kippur to Rosh Hashanah. That's the Gzeira Shova. Ela Sofrim Amarua. Which means the following. That is in the counting when we count three truas and six tekiahs. However, two of them are minah Torah, 
because the Yom Teruah Yelachem is what's called Mufta. It's extra, not needed, where you had Zichro in Teruah. Let's put this outside. Hold on a minute. Good music, but not a show for sound. So the Yom Teruah Yelachem is extra to tell us that put the two together. Clearly not learning as we did last week. We're putting those two truas together. And therefore, we are placing that trua, as we said, it's come Dorosh trua trua ligzei shava. We are comparing, moving across. So let's say this again. We needed to go, first of all, from blowing in the Midbar across to Rosh Hashanah, right? We've got Trua mentioned in the Midbar. We've got Yom Trua Yelochem, which tells us that's how I learned the Gezei Roshava. We didn't know that until now. That links the Midbar to Rosh Hashanah. Remember, we love whatever, however you blow there, that's how you're going to be blowing here. It's a tekiah, trua, tekiah. Fine. You've also got from last week, shavii, shavii, which teaches us whatever you do in Yovel, on Yom Kippur, you'll also do on Rosh Hashanah. That was the Shava from last week. So therefore, what do we now have? We've really only got two, which are min ha The other Yom Teruah, don't utilize it as an extra blowing min ha because it's there to be able to link to the Midbar. You need the extra word, as we learned last week, remember the Shvi was unnecessary. You need an extra word to be able to have a Gezeira Shava, right? And now we're bit learning that the extra word moving from the Midbar to Rosh Hashanah is this word, Yom Teruah. We are also, last week, learned that we're comparing Yovel to Rosh Hashanah, and we've got a true over there. But those are the two <coughs> main truths that we've got. The Rosh Hashanah one, the Yom Kippur one, we put them both in the pot together. That gives us two minatura. At the same time, although we're using that as a gezeira shava, the other yom teruah, the chachomim said we will base it and have another blowing midrabbonon, making up malchus, zichronus, and shofrus. So this Gemara is learning there are only two minatura. One is midrabbonon, but it still makes up the three sets that we blow. Continue the Gemara. Next piece. Uh, last narrow line of the Gemara. Rabbi Shmuel Banach Meini Omer Rabbi Yonason. Also a huge Kiddush for us. He, he disagrees. This is the third view about blowing the sofa on Rosh Hashanah. <coughs> he says, only one is min ha Shtayim mi divrei sofrim. Oh my. Although we are the three sets, only one of them is min ha The others are all mid Says the Gemara, Vahavata shofar turua is the mid ha one. Shabosoin Zichroin Trua and Yom Trua Yelochem, both the ones for Rosh Hashanah amazing, they come letalmudoi hubo. They are coming to teach us other things. Wow. Now, one of them we know. One of them is coming as the, we'll see. Um, we thought was coming to teach us to link across. But let's have a look. We've got that. So the main one is Vavata Shofar Teruah, Shabosoin Zichron Teruah, 
on yom tru or ye elohem le talmud or who bought. Right? So he is learning. Have a look, please, at Rashi. Rabbi Shmuel ben Achmeni Omer, my, I would just got my le talmud or who bought. Which is the next piece of grammar, which says the following. What about the other one? You with me? So we're going from the blowing that's in the midbar. We've got the blowing and the oval. And both those psukim dealing with Rosh Hashanah are not actually needed for Rosh Hashanah themselves. Where do we get that from? So, one of them is going to be a Gezeira Shava. We're going to learn a cross from, if you remember, from the Midbar to Rosh Hashanah itself. However, it's that have the one for the Yovel, and we've got a posset that we learned last week to say whenever you blow a shofar in Yovel, and on Rosh Hashanah, it's going to be the same. So we're going to transfer that across from the, it's amazing, from Yeovil across to uh, Rosh Hashanah. And we've learned, we've got this Gezeira Shava, amazing. From the Midbar across to Rosh Hashanah. We've got the one of Yeovil which is the main one. And that, again, with this Gezeira Shavu, we seem to be putting them together to Rosh Hashanah. So that teaches us, it's only used for, as a Gezeira Shavu. But there's one extra one. Yom Teruah Yelochem. What does that come for? And that will have to move on with more of this it's long pieces, so we can't complete it. It's coming to tell us that you blow in the day and not the night. Okay? Can I ask one, one, sorry? Can I ask one question, Norman? It's, it's yes, Laurie. Hi. Yes, yeah, go on. Um, uh, as you're saying this, I'm thinking about all the illusions of the chauffeur that we're meant to think about when it's when it's blown on Rosh Hashanah, I was reminding myself of the list that um, the art scroll puts in. Oh, it's very good. Yeah, the 10. Quote, quote, right yes. side. It, that, nowhere does it mention the idea of the Midbar and, and the traveling, which seems so critical to our understanding of, of, of what the, sh of the show for the nature of the blowing. And I'm wondering why it's not mentioned as one of the very illusions. Good the blowing that we're learning from the Midbar teaches us how to blow but it doesn't remind us of the midbar it's there just to teach us just in other words we've got the technical way that you blow the shofar is a trua with a tukia and a tukia right that's the source of how to blow the shofar but it's got nothing to do with rosh hashanah funnily enough We've got words which link, we compare the two. Only in other words, it's saying, I've got a chauffeur which I blow on another occasion. I will teach you how to blow it on this occasion. And I want you to blow it in the same way on Rosh Hashanah. But it doesn't actually teach, it's true. You learn it from the midbar, but blowing on Rosh Hashanah has got nothing to do with the midbar. It, yeah, I, it's, I it's a bit of a, a strange concept here. We, we're learning how to blow it from the midbar. In other words, that is the source of blowing is always a tkia, yeah. tua, tkia. Then, once you've got that, whenever you're going to be blowing, that is how you will blow. But the blowing of Rosh Hashanah is for lots of other reasons. One of them is, I, I think you'll find the um, kipper, is it not? Reminding us of of the freedom as um, on, the, on one of the 10 reasons, but not the midbar. The midbar is solely there to teach us technically how to blow. So the bottom line is this, and we'll need another week to complete this. I mean, we can't do it all in one go now, but where we're up to is this. 
Last week, we saw there are three blowing. There's the blowing, as we said. We've got these sweep sukim last week. We were putting them all in the pot together. We ended up with you blow three times minatura. This, this week, we've seen we start from the midbar to be able to work out there's a tekia, shvorim, tekia, trua, tekia. And we're learning that they're either two minatura or one minatura. I'll say more of that next week as we follow this through. Because um, I said there's, there's more here to see. But what we're left with is it's a tekia, terua, tekia. And we have these two psukim. They are talking about Rosh Hashanah clearly. One of them says, Shaboso in Zichro in terua. One of them says, Yom terua ye yelachem, teaching us about Rosh Hashanah. And what's interesting is we've got those two. One of them is a Zichroin Teruah, and one of them is a Yom Teruah. I just want to concentrate a little bit more about those two words. Um, I know we haven't come to the end of the Gemara, but, but at this point I want to stop because this is crucial, particularly for this week. Now, if I can ask you, Peter, to, or those people may have the Gemara, go back. If you can bring up the Gemara from Safaria of Choftes Omad Base, which is the last, first page of Perek Dalit. So if you can bring the Gemara up. Oh, well done. Talmud, Rosh Hashanah. It is on page 29b. Now, uh, 29b, let's go. Drop, oh, you can drop down, that's fine. Just keep drop down, you'll get to b in the end. Or you can go back and get b. Just keep going. Eventually it will get to b, uh, I think. Ah, mm. oh, 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 oh. we're, we're there yet? Not yet. Ooh, long way down, isn't it? Twenty nine B. Good, good, good. Keep going to the Mishnah. Now, this year, as we know, Roshana on Shabbos. Now, what's very interesting is everybody knows when we talk about why is there no blowing on. Shabbos, but, uh, can you just come down a bit more as we get to the next pairing? Yeah, there, there is. Yom Tov, there is. Yom Tov, Shon Shechalios, Shabbos, stop. But Mikdash, how you're talking in Avalod Amdina. Remember, we spoke about that in the base of Mikdash, they blow on Shabbos, but not in the, um, not outside the base of Mikdash. Now, if you are to ask people, they say, what's the reason? Most people, if they do know any reason, know the reason because as we learned in the Gemara, in this, this Gemara itself, that the worry that maybe people will be carrying the shofar. But there is a first reason mentioned in the Gemara, which people don't make a fuss about, and I don't know why, because if you can scroll down a bit, look at the very first reason. In fact, in the Yerushalmi Gemara, there's only one reason given, and this is it. A bit more. This is all part of the Mishnah. Oh, look at this. Me no honey mili. The Gemara, beginning of the Gemara. Yeah, scroll a bit more for us, please. Right, there, there it is. Thank you. Me no honey mili. From where is this derived? Now, me no honey mili normally means it's min Torah that you would not be blowing on Rosh Hashanah that falls on Shabbos. Look at the reason, the first reason of the Gemara. Omer Rab Levi Ba'lachma, Omer Rab Chama, Chama Ba'chanino. Because of exactly the Pesukim we were looking at, and that's why I mention it. Because of Echod Oime Shaboso in Zichro in Teruah. Because of Echod Oime Yom Teruah Yelochem. How come? Once it mentions Yom Teruah, the other time it says just Zichron, 
a memory of, a memorial of, says the Gemara Lo Kasha, Khan beyond of Shechalios Bashabas, it will only be a zichron to Ruach. The calm beyond of Shechali Yosbachal. Yom Teror says, yes, it will be a day of blowing if it falls during the week. But if it falls on Shabbos, it is only a zikhra to an hour. Can you click, click twice on the Gemara, please? No, cut the other, a roll down. Uh, click twice, and then we'll get to some of Forsham around the side. Go to commentary. Ooh. Interesting color. Scroll right down. I think he brings here a bit more. Yes, that's the one we want. The clay yoko is a 17th century commentary. The clay yoko. Actually, before you do that, go to search and put in clay yoko. Clay yoko. Just so we know. Uh, good, good. Go to the one with the. Um, the fourth one down, yes, and tell us a little bit about him. So Rabbi Shlomo Fry Lunchitz, the Kleyoka, popularly known as the Kleyoka, after his the commentary on the Torah, was a Polish army servant, which you we are. After the Maral, you can see his dates, died 1619. He was famed as a gifted preacher. His Russian sermons were captivated, many did, wonderful. His writing focused on ethical matters and his career. Kleyoka remains one of the most popular words. It's kind of great. Um, so if you can, so yeah, just so, so we get the years we're talking about it. Wow. So we are talking about 400 years ago. Go back to what we were looking at, if you can. Oh, well done. Shabosain zichron teruah. Razal, this is the clay on that posuk in Vayikra. And look what he says. Razal, which means a Rabbonon, Zichroni Libracha, Omru, Kesiv Yom Teruah Yelachem, or Kesiv Zichroni Teruah, that's this Gemara we're looking at. Ha Bechol, Ha Bishabbos. Lokach Nema Shabbosoin Zichroni Teruah. Interesting, because the Mishnah says in the Beis Hamikdash they did blow even on Shabbos. How'd you get that out of this? Says the Gemara, the Davka Bigvulin. Only the Gvul means on the borders, means outside Yerushalayim. Yesh Chiluk Bein Shabbos Lechol. Avolo Bamikdosh. Not in the Beis Hamikdosh. Varaya Ladova. What's the proof of this? Midichsiv in Parshas Pinchos. Yom Teruwa. And then the posuk immediately following says, "Va'asisem oila bring the cordon on Rosh Hashanah, burnt offering, etc." Shema mino. From there you learn. Shemadaber. It's talking about b'makom sheha korbonosoi korbonos kravin. Whoa, where the carbonus are brought, one possible following the other. Vahainu Bamikdosh Sheshabos de Huyo Eitzela Carbonus, as we know, you bring carbonus even on Shabbos. Oz Titre Gam Mipne Hashoifa. There, it's always a Yom Terua. Avokan. Nema zichron to Ruah Mikra Kodesh. The posse here says zich a, a memorial of a memory of the Teruah Mikra Kodesh Kol Maleches Avoda Lo Sasu. No work, it's Yomtuf. Work is forbidden. And then it says Vehi Krav Tem. Bring the Korban. Mide Hirchik Mama Vehi Krav Tem. The words about bringing an offering. The Somech Lizi Koroin. Sibu Issa Malacha, right following when it mentions about the true, it says, Don't do any work. Shema no, from there you learn, She Bigvulin, who Madabe. It's talking where the Korbanos are not near. Why? Because you are further away from the base Hamikdos. She Shom Noig Issa Malacha Lava, there, work is forbidden. 
You can't bring Kabbalah, there are no Kabbalahs. The Ein Shom Korb. Therefore, he says the following. What he's saying, we've got two psukim. One posuk is zichron. When is it a zichron? It's a zichron when you're, right? Let's go back to see, oh, oh, well, back to the Gemara there. The Gemara therefore tells us, according to Rab Levi, I've got two psukim. I've got sh- a yom teruwa. Sometimes I'm blowing. And other occasions, it's not going to be a yom teruwa. It's only going to be a zichron teruwa. Says the Gemara, according to this first view, and the, as I say, the Ushami learns just this, that min ha the shofar cannot be blown on Shabbos. The Beis HaMikdush is an exception. But in, outside, on that, otherwise we've got these two psukim. Why is one a Yom Tua? One is only a Zichron Tua. Says the Gemara, and this is, the, as I say, the first view, that is Zichron Tua, by mentioning the Tua, the Kedusha Shabbos, means that no shofar will be blown. Instead, by mentioning the psukim, that's, as we say, the psukim in the Musaf, where we have zichronos and shofar, we're talking about the shofar. We've got malchus zichronos shofros, when we mention the psukim that we do about the shofar, that will be in lieu of actually the sounding of the shofar. Shabbos, the Kedusha Shabbos, means that no shofar will be blown. Not because there's another reason, as I say, people might make a mistake and they might carry it. That's a separate reason. That is not the first view in the Gemara. In other words, we're saying that the mentioning of the Pesukim is equivalent to the actual shofar being blown. And this has got a very, as we'll see, um, in Halacha, it's got a difference. Let me now turn, if you can, please, Peter, this time to Halacha. And if you can turn, please, to the Simon of Rosh Hashanah. Uh, I'm looking at Shulchan Aruch, please. And I'm going to chapter... Uh, no, oh, whoa, 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 too far. Oh, actually, uh, oh, yeah, no, no, do follow that out. See if you've got the Mishnah Bura on that set. Keep coming down. Not sure you have, actually. Have you got Mishnah Bura on that lot? Go to M, Mishnah Bura. Yeah, Mishnah Bura, excellent. Mishnah Bura, go pre- press Mishnah Bura. And we want chapter, the, the chapter on Rosh Hashanah which, well, one of the chapters, one we want is 581. Uh, let's have the Hebrew and English. Let's press the, oh, we got the Hebrew and English. Good, 5581. Five, Follow down 581 a bit more. We have to do, what, no, 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 no. I'm going right to... Uh, note number 24. Now, I'll tell you what the Shulchan Aruch says, on which the Mishnah Bull will make his comment. Well done, Chof. Stop. The ain't token. That's it. Stop. The ain't token. What the Shulchan Aruch says, on which the Mishnah Bull is making his comment, is we do not blow the shofar on Erev. Rosh Hashanah, right? Says the, the Mishnah explaining why. La hafsik bein tkiyas de rishus, le tkiyas de chayva. There's a difference between, don't get confused. There's no mitzvah in our Torah. Of course, it's there in the minig that we do blow every day on uh, in Elo, not Shabbos. We blow the shofar uh, after Shachris. But there's a difference blowing in Elul and blowing on Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah is min ha-Torah, as we've seen, with this yom teruah ye elochem. Okay? So to make a difference between the blowing, which is obligatory, 
and the one which is, as I say, it's a rishus, voluntary almost, it's, it's a bilik, we have a gap. An heir of Rosh Hashanah, the shofar is not blown to show that the following day, that will be the big blowing of Rosh Hashanah. Okay, let me ask you the following question. What happens in a year like this one, where Rosh Hashanah is on a Shabbos? Do you blow in shul? The, what is the minig about blowing the shofar on Friday? You're not going to be blowing on Shabbos. So maybe now, as you're only going to be blowing on Sunday, not on Shabbos, maybe you should, the minig should be to blow the shofar even on the Friday. Or do you say, no, on Erev Rosh Hashanah, you never blow the shofar? Good question. Have a look at the Mishabura in brackets. The Av Kishachal, Yom Aleph Shel Rosh Hashanah B'Shabbos, Gam Kain, Ein Tokin, Be'erev Shabbos. You also do not blow the shofar. The minig is not to blow the shofar. Now you may well ask, you may well ask, but we're not going to sound the shofar on Shabbos. So why not blow your, you will have a gap. You'll have not know your gap year. You'll have your gap day on Shabbos. Why not blow also on Friday? Now, if you can go back, Peter, I now want to go to the Sha'ar. Oh, I don't think you got the Sha'ar seal there. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, if you press on it twice, see what happens. Did you get anything? No, 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 no. We haven't got the shard here. No, we haven't. Okay, what can you do? Uh, unless you go back, go back to, just go, go back, and see if we if he's got the shard here as one of his pirushim. Probably not, actually. Let's just see. Can you go back? No, I don't mean back. I don't mean up. I mean your your previous. Oh, okay. We can do it that way. Let's go back to uh, halacha. I don't think he's going to have Sha'ar Hatsiyun. I don't think he will come. Can you scroll down? No, no, no. We've got, we haven't got, first we'll go to the, go to the Shulchan Aruch. Doesn't matter. I'll tell you what he says. Without holding everybody up. No, go back one more. Safari. Go up, up to Shulchan Aruch. Press and see if we get, uh, if we've got something called Sha'ar and I don't think he'll have it. Because it's a super commentary. Shh. Sorry, sure, no, it's not the one I want. So, uh, let me tell you, we can, let's go back to, to faces here, and I'll tell you what the Sha'ar Tzion says. So, where are we up to? We're up to the Mishnah Brewer telling us that even on a Friday, which is Erev Rosh Hashanah, you still don't blow the shofar. Right. The note on the bottom of my Mishnah Bru, which is also by the Chot Chaim, telling me the reason why. Because as we said before, we're going to have the gap day. If you want to make a gap between voluntary and compulsory, we all have that because you're not blowing on Shabbos. With me? Why not also blow in Shul Shachris on Friday? The note on the bottom says exactly what we saw in that Gemara. If you've got a Mishnah Brewer, Tof Kuf Pei Aleph, but I'll tell you what he says. It's note number 35 at the bottom. Kivan She'oimrim Zichroin Teruah. Seeing as we've got this Zichroin Teruah, Havi Kamo Tekiah. By saying the words on Shabbos, it's equivalent to blowing. Very powerful. Which means, therefore, you need a gap between Thursday and Shabbos, because although you're not actually blowing the shofar on Shabbos, but those pesukim are an equivalence. And therefore, says the Mishabura, on Friday, don't blow the shofar. Because on Shabbos, the Kedushas Shabbos tells us no shofar to be blown on Shabbos. Instead, you've got the pesukim, which we mentioned in Musaf, and that will be equivalent to, as I say, the blowing the shofar itself, which is very powerful. Um, 
just teaching us the importance of Shabbos, the Posuk itself in that Limud we've seen. Yom Turo will be in a normal year. Zichron Turo is for Shabbos. Shabbos itself doesn't have the shofar. Kedusha's Shabbos itself, together with the Pesukim we're going to mention, that will be equivalent to the shofar itself. And I think that's very powerful. Obviously, it teaches of the importance of Shabbos. So in particular, this Shabbos of Rosh Hashanah is super important um, as far as the, the looking after and, and um, uh, the Shemira's Shabbos, the Kedusha's Shabbos, Oinik Shabbos as well. It's still Shabbos. Um, but nevertheless, Rosh Hashanah at the same time. But it means that we really do need to the emphasis on on the Kedusha's Shabbos because Shabbos is acting instead of blowing that shofar for us together with those psukim. And therefore, if we do need a, a chizuk, uh, particular for this this coming week, uh, Shabbos Rosh Hashanah together. Um, with his Kedusha's Shabbos, that must be the message that the Kedusha's Shabbos, hopefully that will act, because normally the, we've seen the Gemara throughout, as we've been learning through this Masechah, the power of the Shofar, what it does to people, the sound of the Shofar, it rouses people, um, uh, the effect it has on people. We're not having that on the Shoshanah, but it, the Kedusha's Shabbos is meant to carry us through, hopefully, um, and still will enable us, all our tefillahs, um, to do the job that they're meant to be doing um, together with us. So it's up to us to be able to move. Normally the sound of the shofar would, as I say, arouse us hopefully to be moving onwards and upwards in any any way we can to try and perfect and improve. And, and um, nobody's, nobody's actually, I say, a tzaddik gomor that we absolutely, without any... Um, anything that they can certainly improve on. That's something we need to be looking at improving, but in particular on Shabbos, where we don't have the shofar, it's the Kedusha Shabbos together with the Tfilas, hopefully, um, which will hopefully lead, as I say, to a Shonatova Umasuka coming up. Well, no, can, can I just ask why, why did, why, so why doesn't Kedusha Shabbos also apply to the Beis Amikdash? Oh, very good. Good, very good question. And there, because there's a posuk to tell us that, that's what that, I say, that's why I brought that, a clay yoko. The, the posuk itself tells us that in the Beis Hamikdosh, we find that it's always a yom teruah for them. There's a posuk to tell us that in the, at the, in the area of the Beis Hamikdosh, the shofar's got to be sounded. Sorry, a posuk where? Oh, that posuk of Yom Teruah, it's a day of blowing, and the, it follows with the, the wording about bringing the corn. You've got Yom Teruah, says the, the uh, so if it would be a normal Monday, then everybody would be in the category of a Yom Teruah. Zichron Teruah is kept for Shabbos, but not in the Beis Hamikdash, because in the Beis Hamikdash they blew the shofar actually um, every every Shabbos as part. They had a whole uh, orchestra blowing, and all instruments played in the Beis Hamikdash on, I say, as as part of the routine, and therefore with Yom Trua Yelochem, and then it says, make, bring your korban. It shows that they're linked. So if it's in a place where you bring a korban, we have a posset to tell us that in the base Amikdash area, the shofar would be blown. That is the way... As so, I say, so, the re so, on. so the bottom line is the reason why you blow in the base Amikdash is because of korban. Because yes, of korbanos. Because their korbanos being brought okay. and it's linked together... Yeah, yeah. Well, they are always in the Yom Teruah category, that possum. Outside of that area, there, it depends. You've got Yom Teruah or you've got Zichron Teruah. Otherwise, you've got to be questioned, why does the Torah sometimes say Zichron Teruah? That Zichron Teruah tells us that there are occasions where you actually don't blow the shofar. All you've got are the words from the Amida that you'll be saying, together with the Kedushas and the Shemira Shabbos, Hopefully, that will bring us through. So, okay. thank you very much. Good to see you. I hope you're keeping well, Simon. And uh, I'll say a, a Shana Tova and a Ksiva Chasiva Tova to one and all. Um, hopefully, we're okay for next week. Say, Sweet Shuba. No, nobody's. Uh,
No, so we're okay for next week, all being well. And then after that, we'll just um, confirm that probably after that.